Do you know Christ? Do you see yourself in him? Christ is changing us every day so that we can become more and more like him that we may show the world how great our God is. Join me, Ben Fetcher, as we talk about this and much more every Thursday from 9.45 p.m. only on Wema TV. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on the time you're watching me. I welcome you to our Beholding Christ program. My name is Ben Fetcher and I am so happy and delighted to be with you this hour. And uh, this is a continuation of where we left the last time we were together. We were, we were discussing about identity and we say that every human being in this world is either identified with either of these men, that, that is the first Adam or the last Adam, which is Christ. And uh, we were reading from the book of Romans, chapter 5, from verse 12, and that is where I want us to take it on from. And uh, I will read, I read from the message translation says, you know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we are in. First sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. So that is a very profound verse that talks about where we found ourselves when we were born into this world. The Bible says that we, were, we found ourselves in a place called sin, then death, and no one was uh, exempted from either sin or death. The, the New King James says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. So what we see here is that we did not become sinners because of the actions or the bad things we did, but we all became sinners because Adam brought us into the place called sin. So everyone that is born into this world, everyone that is born of flesh, everyone that is born by a, by a woman is born in the place called Adam, and that is a place of sin and death. And we say that death does not necessarily mean physical death or, or ceasing to exist. Uh, death means separation and there are three kinds of death. There is the first kind of death which is physical death, then the second one is the spiritual death and the third one is the eternal death. The physical death is where the human body separates from the human soul. Then the spiritual death is the separation of the human spirit from the spirit of God. Then eternal death is the eternal separation of man from God and that is called the place of torment. But today uh, I want us to focus on the spiritual death, which, which we received from Adam. That is why he said we inherited sin and sin resulted to death. So what Adam brought into the world was sin, which resulted to death. But now we also see that uh, in verse 13, he says, uh, until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So the law, has, uh, sin was still there th throughout the time that uh, after Adam sinned, sin was all that time in the world. But before the law was given, no one could tell that this is sin. But when the law came, now sin uh, was known because the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse 14 says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So even those who had not sinned like Adam sinned were called sinners. Why? Because they inherited it from Adam. They inherited it from the first man, Adam. But now verse 15 says, but the free gift of uh, the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. So in the same way sin came into the world through one man called Adam, in the same, same, same way, the same, same token, the righteousness of God came into the world through this man, Jesus Christ. And we say that you are either identified with Adam or you are identified with Christ. Now, everyone that is in this world was born identified with Adam. Now, how do we get identified with Christ? John chapter 3 verse 3 says, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the only way to be identified with Christ is when we receive him, when we, we believe in him and we get born again. Praise be to God. And now what we receive through, uh, uh, through Christ is the gift of righteousness. Romans 5 verse 17 says, for if by one man's offense, 
that is Adam, death reigned through the one. Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So now through Christ Jesus, what we have received is abundance of grace and of the gift, the gift, the gift of righteousness. And I remember the last time we, we, we talked about the gift and we say there is a big difference between a gift and a reward. A reward is given to a person after they have done something like maybe in athletics, that is what we said. Uh, for our people who go for athletics, maybe outside the country, they are rewarded with gold, uh, with silver, with bronze and all that. But a gift is a present given and, and it is unmerited or it is undeserved. It's not out of something you do, but it is because of the heart of the one who is giving. Now he says that those who receive abundance of grace, so abundance of grace is a gift. It's not something that you deserve. It's something that God himself does willingly, not according to anything you have done, but according to his riches, according to his love, according to his goodness and of the gift of righteousness. Now, how we became sinners is because Adam brought us into sin. He, he brought us into the mess of sin. And how we become righteous is because Christ brought us into righteousness. And he gave us that gift called the gift of righteousness, which is a gift. And what is righteousness? Now, what happened when man sinned is that man was separated from God and he had no capability or the ability or the audacity to stand before God because he was guilty, he was condemned, and he was with sin. But now when Christ came, he gave man the audacity, the capability, and the ability to stand before him. How? By making him righteous, by giving him the gift of righteousness, because righteousness means to stand accepted before God, to stand justified before God, to stand as if you have never sinned, or to have a right standing with God. So what we are identified with when we believe in Christ is that we have been identified with the gift of righteousness. Second Corinthians, I want to read Second Corinthians chapter 5. It's a very... Uh, a good scripture and a very uh, known, well-known verse in Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, I, I want to be there in a moment. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one says that is okay. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Bible says he made him. Let me read from the message Bible says God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might in him we might become the righteousness of God. I also want to read it using the amplified says for our sake for whose sake for our sake your sake and my sake God made Christ to be sin. So it is God who made Christ to be sin. If you remember the story uh, the story is written in the gospels is that the, when Jesus was taken to the to the to the to the leaders of the synagogue and to the Sanhedrin and to the priests and the high priest, they found him having no sin. He had committed no sin. He was without sin. But God, because he loved you and I, made him to be sin. Notice, God did not make him a sinner. He made him to be sin. What is the difference? A sinner is someone who acts out sin or who does actions of sin or who does sin. But sin is the nature. God did not make him the, uh, he did not make him the verb sinning, but he made him the noun sin, which means he became that thing called sin. In other words, the nature that God made him or God gave him was the nature of sin. That is strange. That is weird. And that is why uh, Jesus Christ on the cross, he said, my God, my God, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Because God had forsaken him since Jesus had become sin and God cannot, God's eyes are holy, they cannot behold sin. And why was God doing all this? Because of you and I. So the question that comes there is, what did Jesus do to become sin? What did he say to become sin? He did nothing. It was imputed on him. It was, he was made to be seen. And he was not made to be seen so that he can just become seen. 
or just uh, pay the price of sin. No, the, the, the higher goal or the target, you know, anytime God does something, he does it with a higher target or a, a, a target that is above what he does. And that, that is what we see in this that the target of God or the plan of God was not just to make Jesus to be seen, but his plan was so that you and I may be made or may become the righteousness of God. I read from the Amplified says, for our sake, for whose sake? For my sake, for your sake, he made Christ to be seen who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endued with, to be endued with means to be given, to be viewed as, as in when God sees us, he does not see us in sin, but he sees us in Christ. Praise be to God. And he sees us as righteous, to be viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be approved and acceptable and in relationship with him by his goodness. So what we see here is that in Christ, when God made Christ to be seen, he had the, this agenda that you and I, through him and in him, might be made the righteousness of God. That is why we say, when we talk about beholding Christ, when we behold him, when we see him as he is, so are we. So his righteousness has been imputed to us. What did Jesus do to become sin? He did nothing. He said no sin. He committed no sin. In him was found no sin, but God made him sin. So what do we do to become righteous? Nothing. We, do, we, have, we don't have to do any kind act of righteousness. We don't have to commit any righteousness. We don't have to say anything that is righteous to become righteous. In the same token, Jesus was made sin. So are we made the righteousness of God. So when we see Jesus, we see ourselves defined in him. Your definition my brother is in him as he is so are we so the, 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 then we can say if God succeeded in making Jesus to be seen he also succeeded in making you and I righteous because he made him to be seen for you and I that you and I might be made the righteousness of God I want to go for a break and don't change or don't go away stay there stay tuned and I will be right back in a moment I told him man take the break and he said it's okay. I think it is in order for us to take that break. And that's how I, I left the children to go and take our long break that took 10 years. Our daughter did not understand. I see these people talking nicely to each other. And uh, she didn't understand why at the end of the day, the father goes away. We are not a family in short. Mm. It was the toughest time. Mm -hmm. I almost went into depression mm -hmm. for almost eight to nine months. Welcome back. I know you are enjoying this word. We are talking about beholding Christ. And uh, I've, we've just said that as Christ is, so are we. So if I want to know myself, I cannot know myself outside Christ. My friend, you cannot know yourself outside Christ. There are so many things that define people outside there. Some are defined by their work, others are defined by their achievements, others are defined by their uh, failures and shortcomings, others are defined by their looks, but the right and the true definition of you is Christ. Because as he is, so are we. We've seen that God succeeded in making him sin. So if God succeeded in making Christ sin, he also succeeded in making you his righteousness. So you are the righteousness of God. And as you see him, you see yourself in him. I want us to go to Luke chapter, four, uh, chapter 24 verse 27. I want, us to, I want you to see something there. This is after Jesus had died and he rose from the dead. Then uh, uh, he appeared to some guys who were walking. Uh, from a mouse and they were wondering what has happened. Let us read from Luke chapter 24 from verse 24. It says, And a certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. So when they went to the tomb, they wanted to see Jesus, but they didn't see him. He had been, uh, he has, he had been raised from the dead. Then uh, verse 25 says, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. If I can take you back a little bit, 
uh, when they were walking towards a mouse, Jesus appeared to them and they were wondering. And actually Jesus asked them, what are you talking about? Because they were discussing something. They were discussing about the man who came and he, he, he did miracles, then he died, then uh, he has been raised and now they are not sure where he is. So Jesus appeared to them and he asked them what they were talking about. And they were wondering, have you been in this city for, for all this time and you don't know what is going on? Have you not been watching news? Have you not been listening to radio? What's up, man? What's, what's wrong with you? Are you not updated? What is wrong with you? They were wondering, well, how can you be in this city and you don't know about a man who died some days ago and now they are saying that he has risen from the dead? Why are you not aware of that? So they were trying to uh, inform Jesus about Jesus. It's like preaching Jesus to Jesus, telling him about himself. So and uh, verse 25 says, Then he said to them, now Jesus responded and said, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. That is a very profound statement that the prophets, the Old Testament folks, they were all speaking about Christ. They had one message. Christ was the message. So he's asking them, how, how dumb can you be and still breathe? Like Andrew Omar asks, how dumb can you be and still breathe? You are talking about Jesus. You don't know what these guys have been speaking about. You don't know what the prophets have been saying. You don't know what they have been talking about. They have been talking about Christ, that he should die. Listen, he says, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. We are talking about beholding Christ because he is the exact representation of who we are. Now Jesus here appears to them and tells them that don't you know what the prophets were speaking about? They were speaking about Christ and he was supposed to suffer and to enter into his glory. Then from verse 27, he says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he explained Founded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Praise be to God. So this is the first and the, the, the first preaching of the New Testament, the first preaching after the resurrection. And Jesus was here to set the pace that it is about him. It is about him. When Moses spoke, it was about him. When Elijah spoke, it was about him. When Samuel spoke, it was about him. Beginning from, from Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. What does that mean to us in relation to what we are talking about? This is what it means that the whole Bible, the entirety of the scriptures talks about Christ. Unfortunately, most of us, we found ourselves in a place where instead of seeing Christ in the scriptures, we are looking for ourselves. We are looking for what to do in the scriptures. We go to the Bible, you go to the book uh, of Judges, you see yourself and you try to copy someone like uh, Gideon, you try to copy someone like Solomon, you try to copy David, you try to copy Abraham, you try to copy Elijah. Some of us even think that Elijah had better, better days and they desire to live in the days of Elijah. We have even songs that have been composed as desiring to be like the Old Testament folks. But the Bible is not about you trying to figure out yourself in the scriptures. It's not about you trying to find yourself in the scriptures. It's about you seeing Christ in the scriptures. This was the first message after the resurrection, that it is not about you. It is not about your prosperity. It's not about your healing. It is not about how to become wealthy. It is not about all those things. It is about Christ because when you see Christ in all the scriptures, you see yourself. Praise be to God. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When you see the Bible talk about beginning from Moses, he means that uh, from the book of Genesis, the writings of Moses, everything that Moses wrote was about Christ. And all the prophets, everything the prophets said was about Christ. Nothing was about anyone else but about Christ. Though they didn't have in, they didn't have it in clarity. They didn't have the real picture. They didn't have the real name of Christ. They didn't call him the, uh, the real name that is Jesus. They were talking about him from the beginning to the 
uh, from the book of Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to the book of Revelation, it's all about Christ. The Bible is, you know, when we read the Bible, we should not try to, uh, to locate where we are in the scriptures. We should try to see Christ. And the only way to see him is by the revelation of the Spirit. Praise be to God. And uh, we know that the Old Testament is Christ concealed, but the New Testament is Christ revealed. So the only way to know Christ in the Old Testament is when he is revealed to us in the New Testament. When we see him in the New Testament, now we can put on the glasses of the New Testament and see him in the scriptures. Praise be to God. When the Bible talks about the hair, uh, the, the, seed of the, uh, the seed of the woman that will crush the head of the serpent, the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. He is talking about Christ, that Christ will destroy the works of the devil. When the Bible talks about the tree of life in the garden of Aden, the tree of life is about Jesus Christ. When he talks about the rock that produced water, that rock was Jesus Christ. When he talks about the bronze serpent that was lifted up for men to see, you know the Bible says, and that is one of our, our key verses in Beholding Christ program, that God instructed Moses to lift up the bronze serpent. And whoever looked at the bronze serpent, they were healed. Praise be to God. In John chapter 3 verse 14, Jesus says, maybe I can read uh, that verse. John chapter 3 verse 14. John 3 14. John 3 14, the Bible says, I know we all know John 3 16, but now I want you to take you back a little bit. John chapter 3 verse 14, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We know verse 16, for God so loved the world. So he's talking about the serpent that was lifted. So that was a picture of Christ, that when he is lifted up, and when men look unto him, when men believe in him, they will be saved from all the calamities of this world. They'll be saved from sin and death. They'll be saved from uh, all, uh, they'll be redeemed from hell and sin because Jesus is the answer to man's problem. Praise be to God. So when we look at him, when we behold him, we see ourselves in him because God has, has put Christ as the ultimate expression of himself and the ultimate expression of who he has made us to be in Christ. Praise be to God. And there is a man in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, there is a man called the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch in the book of Acts chapter 8 was reading the scroll. I am reading for you the, the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading the scroll. And uh, the Bible says that God spoke to Philip and told him to join him in the chariot. And when he joined him, the Bible says, uh, yes, verse 27 of Acts chapter 8 says, So he arose and went, that is Philip, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, and Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of, her, of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and had him reading the, the prophet Isaiah and said, so Philip had this Ethiopian eunuch reading and this is what he was reading. Okay, Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. So as he was reading, Philip asked him, are you understanding what you are saying? Then this man said, how can I understand unless someone explains to me? Then verse, 40, uh, verse 35 says, then Philip opened his mouth and, pre and beginning at this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. My friend, there is no way you can understand your position in Christ. There is in no way you can understand who you are as a believer until Christ is preached to you. So this man was reading a story just like this, just like any other story. Actually was wondering who is the Bible talking about? Who is Isaiah talking about? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about another man? But when Philip came in, he expounded and he opened the scripture and he revealed 
Christ. Praise be to God. And that is what we are about, revealing Christ to you. Because when you see him, you see yourself. Because as he is, so are you. So Philip opened the scriptures. And beginning at that part where the Ethiopian eunuch was reading, he preached Jesus to him. Jesus is the revelation that we all need to know who we are. Jesus is the revelation, the revelation that we all need to receive our healing. Jesus is the revelation that you all need to receive the forgiveness of sins. Outside him, there is no godliness. Outside Christ, there is no fulfillment of the plans of God. Everything that God has, it's only found in Christ. Your identity is only found in Christ. Paul says to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, that no matter how many promises there are, in Christ they have found their yes. And therefore we bring our amen. So outside Christ, you cannot experience God because God has found a place to live in and that place is called in Christ. And it is in the same place that you and I are found today in Christ. Who is our righteousness? Who is our wisdom? Who is our sanctification? Who is our wholeness? Who is our everything in everything upon everything? So if you want to understand yourself, if you want to know yourself, it's only in Christ Jesus. I want to pray for you and we'll continue next time. Let us pray. We are delighted about your word, oh Jesus. We thank you that you love us so much, that we have our definition only in you. And outside you, there is no life. We thank you that because we are in you, we have life and we have an identity. And you, we have been made the righteousness of God. I thank you for my viewers today. I call them blessed in their going out and in their coming in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, wherever you are. Thank you for watching. God bless you. This is Beholding Christ, and my name is Ben Fetcher. See you in our next episode. God bless you.